Welcome to this video presentation. We have prepared this video presentation in the view of the recent changes in the emission rules for the ICA areas and the use of ultra-low sulfur fuels to comply with these SOx emissions. There is a number of issues that come to mind when thinking about operating with ultra-low sulfur fuels in these areas and we will try to address some of the uh, issues that may come up for the operator. The fuel system for the main engine is made of a recirculating pipe system. The fuels in this circuit is recirculated to maintain heat and when you do the switch to distillate, the two fuels in the circuit will be mixed together. The heat in the circuit for the heavy fuel will have a big impact on the viscosity of the incoming distillates and it's therefore very important to keep an eye on viscosity when switching from a relatively hot heavy fuel to a colder distillate. The size of the system itself also have a big impact on the viscosity drop. The viscosity changed more rapidly if the system volume is smaller than compared to a bigger system. The consumption of the main engine also have a big impact as the consumption of the main engine is the governing factor for the amount of distillate fed into the system into the mixture. A practical example is shown here from a switch from heavy fuel to distillates under steady operation. The engine were operating at 50% engine load and we switched the valve to distillates and we followed the viscosity as the change happened. The temperature would decrease by approximately one degree per minute a little bit lower than the recommendation from our side. We do allow two degrees per minute for change. But as you can see here with the given engine load, the viscosity dropped very rapidly. Halfway through the changeover, the coolers for the fuel system had to be engaged to keep the viscosity high enough to not having seizures in the fuel pumps. And looking at the example here, it should probably have been done with a lower engine load. The recommendations from our side for switching between the heavy fuel oil, hot heavy fuel oil and relatively colder distillates is to decrease the engine load to 25 to 40 percent and then switch the fuel valve. During the switch period the engine load should be monitored and very importantly the viscosity. When switching from a hot fuel to a cold fuel the bound heat in the fuel system will impact the viscosity very quickly. It is therefore key to make sure that the amount of distillate which is fed into the system isn't too high. When switching from a cold fuel to a hot fuel or a low viscosity fuel to a high viscosity fuel, MGO2 heavy fuel, it is more important to keep an eye on the temperature expansion. During this switch, you may you cannot increase the temperature increase more than two degrees per minute. If you do so, there is a risk that the clearance inside the fuel pumps between the plunger and barrel becomes too little and they will start to seizure and eventually stick. It's therefore important to keep two degrees per minute to make sure that this doesn't happen. Looking at desolate bunkered for ships, they come in different variations to the viscosity, but luckily the predominant part of the bunkers received for ships are usually with viscosities higher than 2.5 centistoke. This makes it much easier to maintain a adequate viscosity on the main engine, higher than 2 centistoke, preferably 3 centistoke, and this can be done by using fuel coolers operated with central cooling water. Fuel coolers may also be needed for other appliances uh, in the engine room itself. It could be for the supply pumps, it could be for transfer pumps, it could even be for the boilers that also have a requirement to have two centistokes inside the pumps to avoid having seizures. Using ultra low viscosity fuels such as the DMX grade is very unlikely as this has a flash point too low to be used as a marine fuel. But if a ultra low viscosity fuel is to be used for the main engines, there may be extra need for cooling for the, to the fuel circuit. For this application, a chiller unit can be installed. The chiller unit is a cooling system which will cool the fuel coolers and as such be able to maintain temperatures lower than 40 degrees all the way down to 20 degrees. We have retained a amount of experience from the 2009 switch in California 
with the emission rules from the, in the carp area uh, made it necessary for ships to operate on MGO in these areas. The experience we gained was that it's very important to keep an eye on the temperatures in the fuel system itself. As the engine starts to slow down for maneuvers, the fuel oil is recirculated inside the, the recirculating system and it's heated by the pumps and by the engine itself. The viscosity thereby drops and it becomes crucial to be able to cool that, the fuel so that you avoid having any seizures inside the fuel pumps. Another topic that came up uh, with the CARB ruling was that the number of loss of propulsion incidents increased dramatically just after the introduction of the need for MGO operation. These incidents were predominantly caused by ships not being able to start the main engine on demand and from the, from the knowledge we have, it was very few ME engines which were involved in this. This can be explained by looking at the fuel booster design uh, and the difference between the ME engines and the MC engines. If we look at the ME engines, the stroke of the plunger inside is not constant, it is changed with the engine load and as such we have a very high distance between the low pressure drain side and the high pressure injection side. When looking at the MC engine design, we are using a constant stroke fuel pump and we change the, the angle of the bleak cut to change the active filling of the fuel pump. We therefore have a very low distance between the high pressure side and the drain side and the internal leakage inside these MC engine fuel pumps are much greater than for the ME engines. An example with a calculation is shown here where you see the impact of using low viscous fuels and having a worn fuel pump. The use of low viscosity fuels will give a demand for a higher starting index on an MC engine and if the plunger and barrel clearance also is increased due to wear between the two parts, this also have an additional increase for the starting index. As can be seen from this calculation, if you have a worn out pump, you will actually not be able to retain enough starting index to start the engine itself. In this case, you will have to replace the plunger and barrels to, to new spare parts to be able to regain the new clearance and to be able to have enough filling to start the engine. We therefore recommend that the fuel pumps used in the ICA areas are not worn pumps and at least that the ships have enough spares on board to be able to do the replacement before entering into the ICA areas. It is also a good idea to do a starting test before entering the ICA areas to not have these problems occur when entering into port. For engines operating continuously in the ICA areas, there will be a larger risk for liner polishing. Normally the sulfur in the fuel maintains a certain degree of cold corrosion and this maintains the liner surface fresh and open in structure to be able to sustain a lube oil film. When operating on ultra low sulfur fuels, the cold corrosion will be suppressed completely and eventually the liner surface will most likely polish up. A polished liner gives a high risk of having a scuffing incident and a scuffing incident will cause a untimed overhaul of that unit. By using sermit coated piston rings, there will be a larger degree of reliability for this unit. Sermit coated piston rings can actually retain a scuffing incident without having a need for an immediate overhaul and it therefore offers a certain degree of reliability using full sermit coated piston ring packages when operating in the ACA areas. We therefore recommend for engines operating continuously inside the ultra low sulfur areas to utilize the full sermit coated piston ring packages with sermit coating on all four piston rings.